Hey, what's up? It's your boy, and you know where you're at. That's right, you're underground. Well, you know you're gonna find that DJT and mostly me, Clavo Sound. Indeed, mostly me, and your boy DJT get down. I pen the words, and he hooks the beat. Cause you see, one without the other, and it just ain't complete. Now it's getting warmer. I can see in your eyes that you're feeling the heat. That's right, you know just where you're at. You're at the spot that can't be beat. Yeah, the crossroads, my friend. With your passion, storytelling, and hip hop, me. It was about eight years ago, or closer to nine, when I put pen to paper for that very first time. Remaining true to the topic, the title was This Dysfunctional Family of Mine. Never dreaming at the time, it was the first of many to come. It was a little frustrating, like pulling teeth, trying to force the words. But in my mind, I feared it would never come. Adjusted as it's always done, from the day my life begun, time was doing its usual thing, flying by fast. And before I knew it, this tale of the history of my family was finally done. I closed my notebook and wrote it off as just a rhyme I had done, something just for fun to pass the time. And ironically, to this day, it's still a favorite of mine. So impressed with myself about my very first time turning my very own words into my very own rhymes, not realizing that this was the start of something rather unique, that this would be the crossroads, the one where good old fashioned storytelling and hip hop meet. And if you missed it, don't be shy. Go on, right, hit rewind, and let it repeat. You're the crossroads for good old fashioned storytelling and hip hop meet. Now shortly after that, Big Steve came to my front door and said, Yo man, you gotta check out this program. And he handed me a copy of Hip Hop Number 4. And sarcastically I asked, why? What for? Now needless to say, it was 72 hours later when I raised my three-day funkiest fuck smelling ass up out of my desk chair. That's right, it had been three whole days since I had really had a breath of fresh air. Since I had showered, brushed my teeth, much less ran a comb or brushed my nappy ass hair. Kinda looking like Pookie on one of his better days. But anyways, I had managed to put down nine pretty tight amateur beats, laid one over the vocals of my dysfunctional family, and as if they were made for each other. Oh, it sounded oh so sweet. Now before I continue this tale, I should probably mention that being an entertainer has never been my intention. I mean, maybe in some other dimension, or another place or time. But I knew that singing, or much less rapping, was no God-given talent of mine. But there's never been any doubt. The one gift I surely did have was the gift of gab. And although I'd never given it much thought, my rhyming skills were also not store-bought. Now out of the eight that were left, there was this one particular beat that was like poison to me because it stood out from the rest. If it were BBD's girl, it would have had a high-powered chest. But what it did have that made it the best was a jazzy keyboard that carried the flow that stuck in my head and wouldn't let go. I just moved into a new house, and it was getting pretty late, so I went to investigate a new bar in my new neighborhood since I had not yet ate. And as I listened to GW and Barack debate, in my mind the jazzy keyboard continued to resonate. I asked the bartender to borrow a pen as she took away my plate, and on a bar napkin what was meant to be just a note, five bar napkins later, had become what still to this day was the realest shit I ever wrote. A story about our world and its all never ending confusion. When I laid it over that poisonous beat, it gave birth to story number two, the freedom illusion. After that some time passed, and before long it dawned on me that I had let the rhymes go, as if the words in me no longer had a flow. Then I met this young brother, who was a Leo, like me. D was his name, and he had a knack for producing beats that put mine to shame. Beats that seemed to inspire me to pick up the pen once again. Oddly enough, it seemed to me that the words began to take a little longer for me to find than it previously took, and that everything came out more like tales from a storybook. For the life of me, I could never seem to find a hook. It clear to me that rapping was not my forte. It became apparent that I would have to find my own way of saying the things that I wanted to say, and that rapping would only bring me defeat. It was then when the crossroads seemed to grow beneath my feet. And with that, D, Mostly Me Productions, and Underground Inc. could be the crossroads where good old-fashioned storytelling and hip-hop would meet. And if you missed it, don't be shy. Go on, hit rewind, and let it repeat. You're the crossroads where good old-fashioned storytelling and hip-hop meet. As if I had started my own veneer, for you see, to me, it was all rhyming, but it wasn't quite rapping, and not exactly spoken word. I was trying for something different, new, unlike anything the world had ever heard. And suddenly, it kicked into high gear, and I began penning tales that were all true. 
portions of my life and all the shit that I've been through from Magic's PPOV, that's his puppy point of view, the game, the cell phone, the friend zone, and we can't forget the blind date and the full plate, and once upon a time, parts one and two, just to name a few, of the true tales I give to you from me, and don't forget the one that became the catchphrase for your boy DJT, you know, I'm just saying, maybe it's just me. All of these and more from that boy D of Mostly Neat Productions and Underground Inc.'s very own DJT, founders of The Crossroads, where old-fashioned storytelling and hip-hop meet. And if you miss it, don't be shy. Go on and hit the wine and let it repeat. Yeah, The Crossroads, where good old-fashioned storytelling and hip-hop meet. Boy DJT, and I'm out. Please. I said, hey, 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 what you got to say? And then the voices began to pray. Nah, TV going out that way. White House, old school, cool in the gang, Hollywood swinging. Copyright infringement, I guess it's all that be praying. We've only been there, done that, so go on and do you. You put this one down for your family and friends, both old and new. Shit, baby. Shit, goddamn storyteller. Go on and make it be what it do. Thanks, guys. It's always good to hear it from you. Because aside from the few who come by and hang out for a little bit and I trap them in the crib, kind of kidnap their ass and force them to check out my newest shit. Alright, T, then go, man. I got shit to do. Come on, man. Just check out one or two. I promise I'll untie you if you do. All the family and supposed friends, and let's not forget those supposed mutual friends, because, man, there's a lot. I don't mean to say none of my peeps ever check my stuff out, or at least they say they do. But no one will ever spare me two minutes and drop a little critique or two on my shit. I'll leave your name so that I know that you did it. When you speak in reference to friends and how many one really has, well, it seems it depends on just how deep the levels of your friendships tend to extend. For example, here's a sample of the type of friends there can be. And as always, remember, I'm just saying, maybe it's just me. But I think that the types of friends there are well, is about three. And I think that most would agree that like most things in life, you categorize friends from good to bad. And then there's the ones I like to refer to as friends of convenience. We all know as sometimey or wishy-washy. I guess like everything else in life, it all comes back to quality. As I have always said, I never plan on this storytelling to take me far. But hell, if I did, without the support of family and friends, how does anyone in this business become a real star? I figure with all the social media type shit, the world can't seem to live without it. I thought it'd be easier to put it out. But it seems I'll have to resort to pushing CDs out of the trunk of a car. Hanging out, or what they call loitering, in a Walmart parking lot. Walking up on people, whether I know them or not. Hey, how you doing? How'd you like to check out this new CD by DJT? It's really hot. Hear me now, boy. Just what is this DJT, man? Can't you see? On the cover, the good looking fella. Yes, honest, that's me. From Underground Inc. And simple old fashioned storyteller. The old fashioned storyteller, you say, man. What the hell, what the hell is that? Is reggae? Rock and roll? Classical? It's country man, or hip hop, r and or rap? That's a really good question, because I have to be honest, as a matter of fact, my storytelling, well, it ain't none of that. You see, it's rhyming, but I don't consider it rap. It's true stories from portions of my life, and it's laid over a bumping beat that's always fat. My boy D, from most of me productions, he makes sure of that. Sometimes I manage to make those 16 bars rappers are always going on and on about, but sometimes I don't. And in the same respect, some folks may enjoy my style, and there of course are others that won't. But in order to know if my storytelling is something you can take, go to that Skip On One YouTube page and taste a few of these true tales that I have baked. And after you've sampled one or two, I'd like to hope I can get just another minute from you. Leave a comment or critique, and if you do, I won't feel so blue like Jennifer Lawrence when she played Mystique. Storytelling you say, man, that's pretty cool, it's different, man. Or as I like to call it, the crossroads of where hip hop and good old fashioned storytelling meet. Now, anyone who really knows me knows there's not much Facebook I can take. But I don't want to turn this into a social media debate. I'm just hoping the true blue friends will get the message and show you boy just a little more love. And I guess if not, well, it's no wonder that my true circle of friends ain't no bigger than a dot. And I just have to be happy with the ones that I've got. We're TJT and I'm out. Peace.
It's me, your boy DJT, and there's something I've been wondering about. I've been constantly running through my mind. That's why damn near every rapper who spits a rhyme was at one time or another supposedly living a life of crime. They tell you about it in all their hits. You hear about it all the time. Sometimes you don't know if you're telling the truth, exaggerating, or flat out telling a lie. Now that boy from Philly, Big Willie, whose biggest hit was Summertime, it became an anthem. But still, it wasn't black enough for them. But it was about everyone's favorite season and time of year. His jam's always clean and curse free, but even he admits that's not what people wanted to hear. It seems the masses couldn't get jiggy with it. If it wasn't about guns and drugs, bitches, new whips, and all that blingity bling. Seems to me the negatives in life is about what you have to say. The dark side of life, about what you have to spit. Those are the main ingredients you need to score your hit. I guess it's true what Luda says. Hip hop, it's a dirty game. Do you really want to be a part of it? Hey boy DJT, I've been to the dark side and I've been to that rodeo. And if you haven't, then take my word. It's really no place that you want to go. Now, true as it may be in my life, I've done my share of dirt. But never because of me has anyone ever been hurt. Yeah, I've done a lot of dope slanging, but I ain't never been down with no gang banging. Guilty as charged, full of substance abuse. But you will never hear of me accused of some woman to have been slapping. And as I've said before, this rhyme and I do, it's really not rapping. But you see, I'm neither gangster, nor thug, I'm definitely not a rapper. Not even like Big Willie, could you even call me an actor? Even though all my life, most people have said, he's a real character. No, I'm none of those things, really. I'm just plain old ordinary fella. Yeah, that's me. The boy DJT from Underground Inc. A simple old-fashioned storyteller. <laughs> I'm out. Please. Yeah, that's me. The boy DJT from Underground Inc. A simple old-fashioned storyteller. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Your boy DJT from Underground Inc. A simple old-fashioned storyteller. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Your boy DJT from Underground Inc. A simple old-fashioned storyteller. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Your boy DJT from Underground Inc. A simple old-fashioned storyteller. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. me. Yeah, that's me. Who's here? For real, going to use that peripheral. Yes, my friend, I have returned once again. Told you it's a guarantee that you'll see that boy born and raised in NYC. That old-fashioned storyteller, founder of the Crossroads Underground INC. Yeah, that's me, the one and only DJT. And this story I'm about to share with you, as always, nothing less than totally true. Because that's the only way I can do what I do. If I ain't true to myself, ain't no way I can keep it real with you. And I have no doubt that you feel this one is long overdue. And I'd be bullshitting myself if I said that wasn't true. And that's another thing your boy just won't do. So here we go. Anthony, Andre, my boys, this one's just for you. I think I'm going to call it your 32-year review. Kramer vs. Kramer 1979, Dustin Hoffman introduced the world to Ted Kramer, a man with a wife and son, woke up one morning, wife was gone, left a note, said she was done, left it up to Ted to raise their son, and ironically this seemed to become the theme for the 80s, this new attitude for the ladies, at first society thought it was just a fad, and as it turned out, by the dozens, men were ending up as single dads. It was if the world was on acid or some kind of bad trip. All of a sudden, women, mothers in particular, just seem to stop giving a shit about the roles that women in our society are expected to play. So it appeared that this must the dawn of a new day. Yeah, it seems this just may be it. I was thinking, hell, single dad? Nah, I ain't down with that shit. January 24th, 1983, as you may recall, the blind date, may she rest in peace. 
did the single best thing she ever did for me that brought me any real joy by delivering two healthy twin boys. It's sad to say that by 1986 we finally came to grips with the knowledge of this shit. Like oil and water, no matter how hard we tried, we just didn't mix. And being the more responsible of us too, we decided the boys would stay with me. Shades of Jack Butler, Michael Keaton's Mr. Mom from 1983. As I reflect on that period in time, I can't believe it never entered my mind that the Reagan era was not only the days when they coined a the phrase, just say no, in an attempt to discourage folks from using drugs, but now began the days when Anthony, Andre, and me was all there was. I had no idea of what it was to be a single dad. The very next Father's Day, someone gave me a book titled Fatherhood, and the knowledge it provided was more than helpful to me, quite insightful, considering the author was Bill Cosby. Now, before I go much further into this tale, I must toss out special props to Mimi and Poppy, as they became known. Talking about my moms and pops. For without their love and support, I really don't know just what I would have done. By all outward appearances, most people thought, wow, what a guy, a single dad, and with twins no less. But no one conceived that it was all just a front. But inside my head, it was really a mess. Now, I was there, pretty much always on the scene, but no one could see the inner struggle, the war that raged on between myself and the hustler demons that lived inside of me. I just couldn't stop myself from running the streets. I was all about the short days and long nights. I was high off living the life. I was the absent parent that was always there, out running the streets when I should have been giving the boys every free minute I could spare. But instead I was selfish and took for granted that when I wasn't, me and Poppy were there. Now one thing I know for sure is that my love for you was both there in abundance. It was my time that I found hard to spare, but there's no doubt about it. When I was there, I was there. I can remember how I always felt one up on Will Smith when he did just the two of us about him and his son. I was like, yeah, big deal. It was if I care. I got just the two of us and one to spare. Two boys, what a pair. Two little guys styling those Oshkosh kibosh overalls and those heads full of curly hair. Damn, he used to make me laugh. My two best friends. Remember the morning racing to the EOB and the charger dropped the drive shaft? I was trying hard not to shard in my pants, and the two of you were hysterically laughing at do it again, do it again, Shan. I was there, and you know there are many good memories that the three of us share. And there are the ones that even gave me a bit of a scare. Like when you were two, and Anthony had that gastritol intestinal flu. Andre really didn't have it, but his body mimicked the symptoms, because that's just the weird shit that twins do. I never felt so helpless as I spent two stormy days and nights sleeping in a raggedy old wooden chair between the two cribs in the hospital in Atlantic City where we used to live there. As I always say, time is doing its usual thing, you know, flying by real fast. Before long, I discovered the gift, the natural gift that each of you had. They say some things skip generations, but this one you must have gotten from my dad, because a feel for the baseball is something I never had. And from the bottom of my heart, I can't begin to tell you how many times the mere thought of that always made me feel unbelievably sad. Thinking back on it now, it was through baseball he made a connection with you two that both me and him never had. And maybe that slight little connection is what was missing between us three. Maybe if I had just went to another game or two, that alone might have been all the inspiration, if not two of you, maybe just one of you needed to stick it out through high school and go on and succeed and become the pro player I always knew we both had the potential to be. I'm just saying, maybe it's just me. But that was all back when you were both kids, and with your own demons you had to battle. No doubt some of yours and your mothers are mine that you inherited, but you both met them head on, weathered the storm, and laced the landing with extra points, just for good form. As a father, I'm more than pleased to say that you're better fathers than I was any day. Proof that you did listen to one thing, the most important thing, that I used to stress in so many ways. Be a father like my father. Don't be using me as your role model. Right now, you're both doing fine. I couldn't be more proud of you if I tried. Keep on doing what you're doing. Clearly nothing good but gold stars on this first review. And I have no doubt, you will do just as well on the next 32. It's your pops, and I'm out. Nothing but love for you. Hey, what's up? Yes, it's me, the boy EJT. I hope this tale finds you doing well, as you guessed it. Yes, I hope you have another story to tell. 
Now as usual, I'm just saying, you know, maybe it's just me. At first I had no idea why, but it all became very clear to me when I first looked into her eyes. You understand why I misplaced time and date with this particular person? This was all prearranged by fate, and fate would not tell you any lies. There's a deeper reason that your paths have crossed. All of your instincts, along with the voices, of course, they all remind you to just stay on course while all, if any negative preconceived thoughts, instantly disappear, and at that same instant, all of your senses seem to kick into high gear, as you think to yourself how much you like what you see, as well as what you hear. So intrigued at how she literally radiated of an intense feeling of pure and true unmistakable deja vu, I couldn't help but to think, and even speak it aloud, are you sure I don't know you? Are you sure we've never met? The voices reassured me that either way, this meeting is one for which I would never need to feel regret. And quickly it became clear that the things I said, with a lot less effort than most, she actually did get. How refreshing it felt to me to meet this attractive young woman who was without a doubt wise beyond her years and still just a little wet behind the ears. Yet even though she was less than half my age, instantly it became quite clear that we were on the same page. The more we talked, the more we saw something no one else could see, and we talked some more, and a little more, and it became more than obvious that in so many ways, I was a lot like her, and equally, she was a lot like me. And without saying a word about it, of each other we just knew. We lived by simple rules, and as all people should aspire to do, keep it real with me, and I'll keep it real with you. And if that weren't enough, it just so happens that her favorite colors are black and purple too. Now for the life of me, I could not remember the last time or who it was with. I so instantly clicked. The whole world is a stage and we all have our roles to play. At least that's what Madonna said. And suddenly, it just hit. This scenario, from the book of my life, it's an original revisited, revised, torn out page. This, now just as it happened back then, and I swear this is some true shit. As if the cable man had linked our inner thoughts together with an invisible router and shit. We now heard each other's voices within one another's heads. And as our minds together, our voices chimed finally someone who really does get it. And just what is it, it, you may say? Well, let's see if I can put it to you in another way. You see, it is represented by me, which should make it being me a little easier to see as well as to hear. You see, I'm not one to hide, and if you listen close, you will learn the most, and the knowledge you will obtain will keep you warm inside, just like your breakfast toast. And with or without butter or jam, you will easily peek the kind of person I am. Straightforward, direct to the point, I don't like to mix words. I don't have time for what you said you think you may have heard about me, but that's just an invitation for a long, drawn-out conversation about some second-hand, misdated, bad information. So let's get this clear. What you see is who I be, and the same goes for what you hear. But that's only if it's for me you heard. How about what you think about me? <laughs> I could care less. And for you or no one else, why well, go out of my way to attempt to impress? You either love me or you hate me. And now that you can go tell someone, yeah, I heard him, he said it, then you too will be one of the few who really does get it. It's boy DJT, and I'm out. here once again, and I don't know where to begin, so I guess I'll start by saying thank you simply for being my friend. As silly as it may seem, I'm just starting to believe that our beginning just may be our end. But just for confirmation, I'll say it yet once again, I fell in love with you the very first day that our friendship began. So what could the problem be, you think to yourself, how can I say that I love you, and ask you to take on such a load, to tie yourself down with an old man trying to live life in stealth mode. You're young and beautiful and have so much life you get to live. What kind of friend would I be if I didn't try to give? You have the opportunity for you to succeed and be happy to grow into the wonderful woman you were always meant to be. And I think to myself, damn, how selfish falling in love can tend to make some people be. Am I really thinking about us or am I just thinking about me? One thing on which we both readily agree, that just as it is so important to me, it is also to you, that keeping it nothing but totally real between us is the one thing we will always do. And just for confirmation, I'll say it yes yet once again, I fell in love with you the very day our friendship began. 
right about now, just as I am, you must be surely wondering WTF is wrong with this man. Please, hear me out, let me explain, and try to make you understand that my feelings for you can be remaining intact. And as a matter of fact, they have more than doubled in depth since the day this friendship began, and the knowledge of my heart is that there is no other man who could ever care for you and love you as much as I want to, much less will or can. But to do it right, I know there are things in my world that I must reconfigure and rearrange. I have waited for so long for the one to come along who would give me the reason to want to change. 120 days plus sober, baby. You have no idea how much I envy you, how much I hope staying clean is something you want to continue to do, because it would make it really easy for me to do it too. Because I love you so much and want to be on the same level of clarity with you. I've come to now, and it makes my way out of this game. One thing, they want to inevitably take me from you. And just for confirmation, I'll say it yet once again, that I fell in love with you the very first day our friendship began. Now, it's not as if I don't feel like, before we even got started, that I've already failed. Small time bullshit hustle, and I had no reserve and stash to get you bail. A man without a life, to speak of. A man who has no identity, a man who barely exists. Fourteen long years off the grid, fourteen long years of this shit. Ducking the consequences of stupid things that I had done, but still having not changed or improved nothing in my life, not a thing, not a single one. But with you in my life, I have no doubt that I can get it done. So as hopeless as things may seem, at times I can have to leave. we are looking it together, old school and brat, and we're gonna do just fine to the very end of time. And just for confirmation, I'll say it yet once again: fell in love with you the very first day our friendship began.